2.0 is just around the corner. Coming in just under two whole weeks, we're obviously just itching to know what's to come once we sail across to Inazuma. But the 2.0 trailer hides within it some little bits of information in plain sight. Here's 10 things you might have missed in Genshin Impact's 2.0 trailer. Now I'm gonna preface this by just saying that it's my first time doing this kind of video and to be frank I thought I'd put some spin and I don't really know if this is gonna be good. This is more gonna be a speculation video along with some things that you might have missed while you were watching it. Anyway, I'm still doing this video so alright let's get on with it. Why are there so many purple sakura trees? In Inazuma, sakura trees mean beauty and royalty. Since this is a rare breed of sakura tree, this also means spirituality and divinity. Could it be that the visions being confiscated relate to how much power and longevity the shogun now possesses? Therefore, more of these rare breed of trees. Or the high concentration of visions in certain areas made them look like this. You can certainly see parts of the map with purple sakura trees and some without, especially in larger towns where the vision hunters store and later move their confiscated visions. Moving on to the second thing you might have missed. The trailer gives you a set of images of the new characters you meet and possibly play in Inazuma. But did you notice that it was presented using the Inazuma styled vision case? And did you know that the vision designs are based around the elements themselves? We've seen three confirmed so far, with a Nemo having its wings, Geo visions very geometric and square-like, and now Electro visions similar to the Electro element are round and circular in some form or type of manner. I'm not gonna count other vision designs just yet, since we don't know what they actually look like after going to other regions. For all we know, Child's vision design might be from Fontaine and Kaya's vision might be from Slesnaya instead. A design feature the devs decided? Or does it have its own lore and story? Maybe I'm just digging too deep. We already know that if a vision holder dies or falls, the vision itself becomes a masterless vision, retaining its shape and design, but the element bestowed upon it in the middle disappears. But what happens when you take away someone's vision from them? The holder does not die, but their vision is taken away. What happens to both the vision holder and the actual vision? Well, in the trailer, we meet a person who had his vision taken away, and he states that he feels empty, incomplete. He feels that something is missing, almost as if his soul is taken away. This is then concluded by Miko saying, For to be stripped of one's vision is to be stripped of one's ambition. As one who is thrown into the sea, though he fights back desperately against his predicament, it does nothing to prevent his descent into the depths. Pretty similar to when the holder dies, when the vision is taken, while the holder is still alive, they then become a husk of their former self. They retain their form and body, but they lose their ambition, unable to define themselves, to decide what it wants, unable to find a goal to achieve, becoming a visionless master, if you could call it that. Moving on to the third thing you might have missed, new domains are what we've all been waiting for since Millilith and Pale Flame. But did you notice that the new domain is not located inside a cave or under the ground? This new design is not new to Genshin Impact however, we've seen multiple domains that place you in the sky, but with the new artifacts coming with the release of Inazuma, could this be the first artifact domain that transports you somewhere floating in the sky? If so, how are we going to get there? Through some gate and doorway opening again? I hope not. Maybe a cave that suddenly transports us to a floating domain, like the Adepti. Or maybe we go inside the teapot in some old samurai's home. Or maybe this could be a new biome for our Serenity teapot. This next one is gonna be a follow-up to number 4, where after we see a new domain, we're then shown a few shots of what seems like a house. A very Inazuma-styled house, having minimalist interiors, a main hall, some paths to the left and right. All it needs is a set of staircase going up to the second floor, and then maybe some rooms, and a balcony, or wait a minute. We won't know for sure, but if this is just a random interior scene, why would it be so bare? And why would Mihoyo show such a scene? On to the fifth thing you might not have noticed, we get to see quite a familiar face. A face that we often see when we finish our commissions. After seeing the interior of the Inazuma-like home, we get a glance of a village or town in Inazuma. We see a restaurant sign and some townsfolk minding their own business. But in the corner of the shot, you can see Catherine of the Adventurers Guild, as well as another adventurer walking towards her. It's safe to say that Nurse Joy, I mean Catherine, won't be missing out on any of our travels in Teyvat. Moving on to the sixth 
thing you might have missed. The Almighty Shogun focused on one goal, and that was to implement Eternity in any way possible. Thus, the Nation of Eternity was given to Inazuma. And the symbols you see on the towns on the trailer aren't just the Electro Element symbols. They're meant to signify Eternity, the unending and perpetual state of one thing or another. You can see more of these emblems on trinkets, weapons from Inazuma, undoubtedly one of the new weapons that we're going to get, and most notably the town guards. You might say, well, Aru, every town guard has its element as a symbol. In that case, you might want to take a closer look at the town guards in Mondstadt and Liwe. They look similar to the given Archon's element, but distinctly different, having its own design and meaning, with Mondstadt having the most different looking region emblem. But I'll let you guys decide on whether I'm just crazy or onto something. Now this one might be pulling too hard on something, but Sayu might just be a normal human being. Her pint-sized height, her tanuki leaf, her ninja-like nature, and the fact that she has a getup of a ghost raccoon might seem suspicious. But if you look at her feet, there doesn't seem to be a paw print under it, unlike Sucrose or Diona for example. But as said by Ayaka herself, she's neither a tanuki, which is a raccoon, nor a ninja. She can easily be found if you give her some candy too. There's a resistance group under the Sangonomiya name mentioned in the trailer, with the characters of interest so far being this cat boy who is a Geo user and this lady who seems like a Hydro Catalyst user, fighting against all of Inazuma probably, as well as this Electro Bow wielding lady. How do I know? Well, I don't read leaks, but judging from this trailer, you can see them harboring a vision, and the Inazuma styled vision case at that as well as the actual element bestowed upon it. Very different from typical symbols and emblems we usually see from the common Inazuma Eternity emblems. Lastly, in the final scene of the trailer, we find ourselves possibly facing the Shogun, a new trance boss, maybe, we don't know. But there are four flashing scenes in black and white, with the first showing a pyrovision being thrown, having an Inazuma-styled case. We'll go back on that later. The second, having the MC in shock, the third with the Shogun's hand grasping at something, probably the vision, and lastly the MC stealing the vision before finishing with the Shogun's last words. But whose vision was the MC taking? If we take a look at Ye Miko's scene, there was a pyro vision turning to dust the moment her face was shown. But there's another shot of her wearing a trinket with a purple round case, something a vision can hold. Could the pyro vision be hers? There's been no other pyrovision seen apart from those two clips. And why is she wearing that purple trinket on her hair? Earrings perhaps? I don't know. And there aren't much in the trailer that I could find after like a day of searching. But I'll give you guys another one, just for an extra thing you might have missed. There are two male voices in the trailer of 2.0. The first one probably is Kazuha's voice, and the second might actually be the voice of Thoma. If you compare Kazuha's voice in the game as well as the voice in the trailer, they sound similar to Kazuha. Mondstadt is the city of freedom, and Liyue is the city of contracts. As for Inazuma, it's known as the Nation of Eternity. This scenery is wonderful. Surely enough to convince anyone to become a wanderer. But in the next few scenes, a different and more energetic voice will mention you meeting someone else first. I know of a way to introduce you to the Raiden Shogun. But before that, there is one other place I was hoping you both would accompany me to. I suspect this is Toma telling you to meet with Ayaka since you meet her with Toma as shown in the trailer. Meaning you meet Toma first and then he leads you to Ayaka and then you go to meet Yoimiya and uh, who knows what happens next. So that's it! The 10 plus 1, <laughs> the 10 plus 1 things you might have missed in the Genshin Impact 2.0 trailer. Now tell me guys what you think of the new trailer. Did you guys see anything worth of interest? Something worth looking into or making theories about? Did you thought of some new theories relating to the story or anything? Or maybe you just saw something fun while you were watching the whole trailer. Comment below if all this made sense to you guys or not. And I'm thinking of making... Genshin overviews once Inazuma comes out, so do subscribe and click the bell icon for more content from me. Alright, see you guys later and bye!